Hey everybody, it's the Aries 1999 and today my channel hit a very special milestone. That's right, we are now up to our 150th subscriber count. I'd like to thank you all for viewing and today we have something very special in store. If you're wondering what that numbering system just was, it was a program I quickly threw together in Python. But I've got something else Python related I want to show you. It is a character randomizer that I built back in the summer of 2019 that I never really shared on the channel until now, but I think that this is going to be a good opportunity for it. Okay, everyone, this is what this program looks like when it is running. Set parameters, gonna say no at first, that way you can see what this looks like just shooting one out. Okay, so <clears throat> this is everything that it gives you. You are a male, silver scale, dragonborn. 78 inches tall, 211 pounds. Class is Fiend Patron Warlock, and background's a sailor. Uh, likes a job done well. Uh, freedom, ocean represents free. Uh, bond, cheated out of fair share of profits and wanted to get my due. And he follows orders even if he thinks that they're wrong. Huh. So. Let's come up with a story here. So we can say that this guy, he was sort of taken aboard a ship from a young age, and he sees the captain of that ship almost as like a father figure, and he wants to do right by him, so he's willing to follow his orders. And at one point, this even got to him just sort of following along with the captain, even when the captain told him not to collect the treasure that he was owed. Perhaps this is because the, the captain wanted a larger portion, or perhaps he knew something about it. But this began to grow some resentment in his heart, and he made a deal with the devil to try to get back the treasure that he thought was his. And then as for his stats, oh wow, two seventeens. Since he's a, you know, warlock, one of those should probably be for his charisma. So yeah, this guy, you know, he's met a lot of people, been out on the seas, he's good at talking. And then a low stat of 9. So yeah, that's a pretty good spread. Now let's generate another one of these characters. Now this part up here where it says set parameters, you can make some choices about the character if you want. So let's put a Y, and male or female, let's go random, and I want to narrow Kokra. And then random, class, random background. Okay, female Aarakocra, 64 inches, so about 5 foot 4, 104 pounds, pretty light. We have the Shadow Monk, noble background, um, elegant flattery, makes people feel wonderful, bond is with family, nothing's more important than the members of the family. Oh hey, that works out well, the ideal and the bond. And your flaw, the world does in fact revolve around me. Oh, you speak common, or in Error Coker, Error Coker. Okay, yeah, I got Error Coker in there twice, so that's a programming error on my part. But, yeah, starting goal 25, and... So, what can we do with this? So, it's a way of the Shadow Monk in particular. So, perhaps... There's a long tradition of the nobles in this family learning the way of the Shadow. Perhaps that's how they rose to power and begin with, using the power of the Shadows. Or, perhaps, you know, this guy got a little fed up with noble life, so he began hanging out some of the darker parts of town, but he needed a way to move around quickly, so, you know, between her wings and her shadow stepping, that can help out. And then we could maybe tie this back in with the sailor dude, because perhaps one day, you know, his ship landed in her city, he got off of it, deciding they didn't want anything left to do with that boat, and they both met up with an interest in making more money for themselves, joining an adventuring party. Not too much of a direct connection there, but perhaps that noble lineage has some association with the fiend that the Dragonborn works for. Either they're sworn against it, or perhaps they have a family tied to it. And, yeah, another high roll, 17. I'll show you guys later how this whole program works, including the stat creator. Okay, let's see what the third member of our party is. Yes, um, sure, another female. Uh, random race, uh, let's see now, we already have a monk and a warlock. So, how about a paladin? That's gonna be number eight. Then random background. Okay, oh, a female mountain dwarf, oath of the crown paladin. 
53 inches, 170 pounds. Oath of the Crown, noble family from before. Perhaps they have a direct connection to each other that way. Okay, so, defining event, a lord rescinded an unpopular degree after a lot of symbolic act of protest against it, because he's a folk hero. Hmm. So perhaps that noble lord is the parent of the Aarakocra noble from before. Yep, it all, can all tie together. No one should get preferential treatment before the law, and no one is above the law. Fairness. They have a family, so, yeah, they also, but have no idea what they want, are, but, you know, they still respect family bounds. And they do secretly believe that things would be better if they were a tyrant. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps he has that connection with the uh, Dragonborn from before because he feels like they were cheated. And, you know, this guy, this lady doesn't believe that people should be cheated out of what's rightfully there. So perhaps they can work together for justice. Yep, we're putting together a mighty crew that seeks justice and treasure. And this guy... A bit lower stat distribution than the others, got a 9 and a 7. Okay, then. Okay, let's whip up one more character so that we can have a four-person party. Um, sure, we can set our parameters with this one. How about another man? Um, race can be random. Class random. But let's choose the background here. Um... What an outlander. So a male lightfoot halfling. Ooh, definitely the smallest one. Oh, hey, drunken warrior monk. So there's two monks in this party. Outlander, exile or outcast. Okay. Uh, watch over friends as if they were newborn pups. Uh, all about honor. Oh, yeah, here we got two things here. You know, connection to clan for both the ideal and the bond. And his flaw is that he won't save those that can't save themselves. Feels a bit like it contends with the personality trait, but maybe it can still work out. And this is interesting. He speaks Aarakocra. So let's tie this back in with the Aarakocra noble from before. Perhaps he taught her the basics of being a monk, but she specifically, instead of becoming a drunken warrior, went shadow because of her family line that had maybe some connection to shadowy forces, or perhaps she greatly valued not being seen, whereas the Drunken Warrior is all about being seen. And, oh, this guy's got the worst stat distribution of any of them. Three negatives, and his highest is a 15, so, you know, probably be a fun character to play, but might not last for very long. And so now that we have our four-person crew, let's uh, go under the hood, and I can show you how this program Okay, yes, this is what the source code of that program looks like. Um, as you can see, it starts off by importing random. Um, that's just a Python module that basically lets it work around with randomizers. This isn't exactly a coding tutorial, but I'm still going to be talking a bit about the mechanics here. So first, you can set your parameters. Got a couple options of Y and N, depending on what the user plugged in. Uh, then you got for the starting gender, male or female, which you can either select or have randomized. If parameters equal no, then it's random, and if the input is zero, it's random. That's pretty straightforward. Now we get to the various races. Um, as you can see, you know, there's of course all the sub-races out there, quite a few of them. Black scale dragonborns, blue, brass, copper, etc. Dark elves, high elves, what elves. Uh, ground elves are something that I made in a homebrew video that I'll link to down below on homebrewing the elves. Then there's the gnomes. You see, my starting thought for this was that, you know, I would have 12 classes, 12 races, 12 backgrounds. Then with the sub races and subclasses, there would either be 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, or 20. The idea being that you could, in theory, recreate this just using dice and paper. But as I began to add on more with various homebrew and unearthed arcana content, it didn't quite work out that way. And, you know, then there's also all the expansion stuff. So it started off as a fun idea, but didn't quite work out. Okay, so then races. Uh, here you've got where it's the various heights and weights. So the player's handbook provides a nifty little chart that suggests a range of heights and weights for the um, nine base races in there. 
and then I was able to use that information based on the information in the Elemental Evils player companion to figure out what those ranges would probably be for Aarakocra, Dragon. So the player's handbook has got a little chart in it su suggesting various heights and weights for races. So I was able to use that information on the nine races there, then extrapolate that based on what I know about Aarakocra, Genasi, and Goliaths to be able to create their own um, randomizer for that, since they obviously weren't included in the player's handbook. Then we get down to languages. So basically the slang, S-slang, that's just the set list of languages that I have up towards the top of the program. R-lang is the race slang and basically this is saying to remove from the list the racial language so that way you don't double up but as I showed you earlier with my Aarakocra example there's a bug in this that I need to work out and so now we get down to backgrounds um, you know criminal, entertainer, guild, artisan, noble, and sailor they all have variants to them so that's taken care of here where it can be a random choice between the criminal or the spy for instance and then there's just this straight list here which is telling it what to pull from for the backgrounds and then the same for the classes as I mentioned before I don't just have the official classes in this program it's also various UA and homebrew that made sense for me since I allow homebrew at my table and it's what my channel is built around but I do have a secondary version of this program that just uses the I guess you could call it legal content. Yeah, the Mysterious Feline Patron Warlock. That's basically Garfield. I found a fun thing on Reddit for that that I'll link to below. And yeah, there's a lot here. Okay, so then if the per if you selected yes that you want set parameters, then it'll give you your 13 class options from Artificer to Wizard and then you just select a number 1 through 13 or 0 if you wanted it to be random and then it's also random if you said no parameters that's the same sort of thing with background now this is all the backgrounds as you can see from here all the way down to here is just act like but that's because you know you need the personality trait the ideal you need the bond and the flaw so that's at least four things with multiple options each but then there are also things like, for instance, uh, the charlatan, where there's the favored scam. Or there's the criminal, where there's the criminal type. So yeah, some of these have more options to them than others. Guild Artisan actually has the most of those additional things. There's 20 of them. And now... Now we can get down to one of my favorite parts of this program, all the trinkets. Yeah, I love dealing with the trinkets when you're first making a character rolling on that table from the player's handbook. Because, you know, the trinkets, like, maybe it's just a random piece of garbage that your player never uses. But it can be a great opportunity for your dungeon master to add, you know, maybe like a, sub a side quest or tie it into the main plot about where it comes from. Like, for example, a candle that can't be lit. Is it cursed? Who knows? Or the old key. Perhaps one day you find the door that it goes to. An indecipherable treasure map? Well, if you find someone that can read it, boom, there's a quest right there. Uh, ton of good stuff here. Needle that never bends? Uh, I mean, if it's an indestructible needle, perhaps it's made of adamantite. Yeah, so just, you know, I encourage you to get creative, both players and dungeon masters, to try to find a way to incorporate just the random small details of a character into the greater story. You never know what you might be able to come up with. And now, lastly, we have the stat maker. I did not actually make this stat generator myself. Uh, my friend Andreas made it. He's the one that plays Earthmover on the Enter the Dungeon campaign podcast. I could never quite figure out this part, but luckily he knows how, and so now I've learned from him. Basically, it just rolls 46s, then puts them in order from grace to least, then it gets rid of the one in the back since that's the lowest, and then you have your three remaining values. Does that six times, and you've got your six stats. So, let's run this program one more time with all of that in mind. Okay, one more character. Set parameters? Yes. 
Yes, I think we will. So, sure. Now, why not? Um, don't. I didn't see any glass in there, so let's go for that. And a cleric. Background. Entertainer. Okay, male Goliath, 94 inches. So yeah, this guy's pretty tall. It's about 7 feet, I think. No, sorry, that's just shy of 8 feet. 160 pounds, forged domain cleric, and a gladiator. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, perhaps, you know, he forged his own weapons and armor. Entertainer routine, dancer. Okay, so two ways to look at this. Either A, that's an error in my program that still gave you an entertain a routine when you're basically a gladiator, that's your routine. But, what if his specialty was dancing in combat, trying to, you know, throw off his enemies, distract them, and also add to the fanfare? Because, you know, gladiator, it's a spectator sport. Then, personality trait is that I love a good insult, even one directed at me. So, yeah, perhaps, you know, he danced around his enemies, sort of calling them out, but also playing into it when they called him out. Uh, creativity, yeah, that's pretty creative. Bond, I idealize a hero of the old tales and measure myself to deeds. Okay, so yeah, perhaps, you know, his inspiration to become a gladiator was about hearing tales of old gladiators. And despite my best efforts, I'm unreliable to friends. So yeah, perhaps, you know, this guy's very spontaneous, so it's hard for him to keep his word. And shrinket, shard of obsidian that always feels warm to the touch. Maybe it's magic. And and then for his stats, um, pretty moderate spread, but yeah, 15 high stat. Yeah, it's probably for his wisdom, for his connection to his god, for his power. So yeah, you know what, um, Goliaths, they typically have like a nickname based off of something special they do. So perhaps this guy is um, Dancing Forge. That's his Goliath name. <laughs> or Spinning Hammer. Spin Hammer. Yeah, that could be his Goliath name. But anyway, hope that you guys like this program. There's going to be links to both the homebrew and the non-homebrew version of it in the description down below. So guys, um, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, hope that you will all check out the program down in the description and let me know what you think of it in the comments, anything that I should add or edit, just let me know. If you want to check out some more from me, I run two actual play podcasts, the first one's called Enter the Dungeon, that's more traditional fantasy D&D, then there's the SCB D&D Adventures, that's just a giant mashup of IPs ranging from Harry Potter to Star Wars to Percy Jackson, you name it. And if you want to check out some more of my videos on here, though, for my past two subscriber specials, at 100 subs, I did Ready Player One Homebrew. And for 50 subs, it was Full Metal Alchemist. Well, that's all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and God bless.